Noise department. So I was like, this bar is way out of your way, man. Like, what? You, you passed eight bars that I can think of <laughs> on your way over here. What makes you want to come back here? He's like, no, no, we just had a great conversation last night. I thought it was kind of fun. I want to do it again. I was like, dang. So it wasn't the beverage menu that he came back for. He came back for the human interaction. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But that's what your local gaming bartenders are like. Yeah. I mean, you go there. I'm not going to order a Vucare or a Sazerac or, God forbid, a Ramos Gin Fizz. That's a beer in a shop bar. This is Thirst Trap, a beverage industry podcast. And I'm your host, Tracy Bradley. Hey, everybody. I am so excited today. We have my new work best friend, Derek Crow, with us in studio today. Hi. Hi. I'm so excited for you to be here. Happy and, to be here. Thank you. And it's your first time. First time ever doing podcast. a podcast. That's All right. right. And it gets to be with your new best, your yeah. new work bestie. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Space. So let's uh, let's see. So Derek and I, we've known each other for a few weeks now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we met at the office of of, a, of clients, and um, we hit it off. And um, it's been it's been a great ride. Yeah. So far, yeah, we've collaborated on a couple things, and uh, one one very important thing that uh, I, I asked him to collaborate with me on is. Um, He's, he's going to be making in studio today. So I'm very excited about this. Very excited. Oh, me too. So um, let's talk about you. Talk about me. Let's talk so, about you. Uh, born and raised in Wyoming. Wyoming. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep, Cowboy State. Spent a good 22 years out there before I got tired of the bitter cold and lack of opportunity. So uh, I was actually coming out to Las Vegas ever since I was about eight years old. Visit family. Dad's side's been out here for a very long time. So Every summer, every Christmas, coming out to visit, doing it uh, very backwards, as my dad put it, doing the uh, brutal, brutal cold winters in Wyoming and then coming out here for the scorching summers. I thought I was just freezing and thawing out. Right. But uh, yeah, I got to a point where I was working at this real fancy Italian chain out there called the Olive Garden. And the very next step for me in that particular world was, hey, let's send you out to Florida, let's do a couple weeks of management training, send you back here. What do you think? And I was like, well, what does that pay? Like, that's mm-hmm. a, it's a big commitment. You guys yeah. are here 50 plus hours a week. So he told me, he's like, yeah, it's about 55,000 a year. And I was like, I work six hours a day and I think I've already made that this year. So yeah. I think I'm going to pass. Thank you though. And I was like, work life, I'm very, very big on work to income ratio. That's why I love the service industry and the hospitality world. Mm-hmm. It's one of those few fields out there that the more you put into your job or your bar or your restaurant, you can get more out of it. Yes. If it's personally, if it's financially, it's just, to me, it's just so much more rewarding. Mm-hmm. Good time management. And mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of, of work smarter, not harder. Oh yeah. Yeah. Huge fan of that. Yeah. So I, uh, I moved out here, actually transferred with the Olive Garden, which was fantastic. So you talk about a concept that is done copy and paste so well. I had two days off from the one I worked at in Wyoming, drove out here, unloaded, went back again, two days later walk back into the bar and this bar is set up the exact same way. Like all the bottles in the same way, the Rolodex on the back bars in the same place. I'm like, Oh, this is very plug and play. This is great. Okay. So worked at the one out in Henderson for about nine months okay. until I landed an opportunity at the cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. Okay. So over there, I got a chance to work with, uh, um, one of Vegas's big female local legends in the uh, mixology world, Marina Mercer. So we opened up a, uh, it was a molecular bar, an adult ice cream shop at the Boulevard Pool called the Neapolitan. Cute. So okay. It was a very, very fun and odd concept. So I'm coming from a place like Olive Garden, and I'm going to a place where I'm making a full-size cocktail, throwing it into a KitchenAid mixer, adding liquid nitrogen, freezing your cocktail down. <laughs> so now you have a sorbet you're going to eat and get a buzz off of. Right. And then we had uh, popsicles that were held together with gelatin sheets. We had all sorts of fun stuff, boozy shakes. Very few things you could actually serve a kid, which being at the pool was kind of tough because I had to turn away a lot of business for that yeah. matter. But it was really fun. And she was, a, she was a great asset at the time because I was very, very hungry and wanted to learn more. And there wasn't a lot of teachers. I never went to bartending school. We didn't have those available resources out there in Wyoming, especially coming out here. I, I didn't learn about uh, Crescent Gaming Bartending School till much, much later. Right. So I uh, lean on mentors like her and she could see that, you know, this guy's hungry for some more. But so she, she was one that constantly... Uh, at me, as I put it. I went to Ace Bartending Academy. Oh yeah, how was that? Oh yeah, um, it was it was three weeks of pure fun. Oh gosh, 
no, I did. I did it with uh, one of my best friends, Asia. We decided to do it together. Um, in uh, what was that? 2011, summer of 2011. Oh wow! I was on a break between Johnson Brothers. Well, I hadn't started Johnson Brothers yet, and I had just left Red Bull. So I was like, I just kind of took the summer off to be a mom, and I got really bored. So I went to bartending. I get that. School. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. It's funny. My dad uh, actually bartends as well. So he was a big into contracting world construction for as long as I can remember. And then the 2008 crash happened. Very wild times. So he calls me up one day and he's like, I can't hire guys fast enough to take on the work that's coming in. Like, this is crazy. And he's making more money than I ever thought he could make. Right. Three months later, he calls me up. Um, out of a job. I'm looking for work. So he was doing all sorts of different jobs, odd jobs. He got like a little male modeling. He was driving prototype Mercedes, anything nice. to pay the bills. Okay. And I started bartending back then. It's like 2011, I think, late 2010. Uh -huh. um, at that point, he's like, hey, so what do you think about bartending? He goes, I love this. Like, this is, this is great for me. The human interaction, the, the social quality of it all, um, taking care of people. I'm getting paid to do this. Like, this is this kind of a dream. It's really, really, really fun. So he goes to Crescent Gaming Bartending School. This is before I moved here. Then he applies at this little resort called the Cosmopolitan as it's opening up and gets hired in the Chandelier Lounge with zero experience, hired mainly off personality. And he's been bartending ever since. So it's kind of funny. He was like, oh, you're a second generation bartender. I'm like, well, yes and no. It's kind of in, in reverse, <laughs> but it, it is fun. It works. That's good. And he's still there? No, 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 no. God, no, no. He, uh. That's why I feel like the industry out here in particular kind of spits out a couple different types of bartenders. Uh -huh. There's, you know, there's flair bartenders, there's gaming bartenders, and there's your, your mixologists or yeah. your, your creative guys. Um, my dad really tried to dive into that mixology world mm -hmm. right from the get-go, and then he transitioned to a few different bars inside the Cosmopolitan. One was uh, Book and Stage, okay. their sports bar. Yeah. So as a sports fanatic. Yeah. So now he really gets to dive into like the, the gaming aspect of it okay. and the relationship building and that's where he found his forte. Okay. So he kind of let go of the rest. And he, it's funny because he, even recently we were talking, he's like, I haven't made more than a three-part cocktail in like six years. It's great. And I'm like, good, good, good. No, you, you find your niche and yeah. you're happy with it. You can roll with it. You can ride with it. Yeah. He's great. He knows sports statistics that I, oh, he can tell you what high school they went to, what injuries they had, who their coach was in high school. I'm like, why is that relevant, man? Oh my gosh. But that's, I mean, it's, he's passionate about it and it lends well to his career path. I mean, so if you need like, random celebrity facts i'm your girl oh yeah and i don't know why it's just like i'll be watching something and not and honestly i've been so busy it's like i don't have a lot of time to watch lots of things but you know it's just like this like yesterday we went and saw the new beetlejuice movie and oh, like the that. actress that there's an actress that plays beetlejuice beetlejuice's ex-wife uh -huh. and it's like I know who that is. But then the thing is, so if I can't think of who she is, then I have to do a deep dive and I have to figure <laughs> out exactly who she was and what she was in that I know her from. Like Diving so down the I rabbit can, hole. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, so then I go down this little, not not a huge rabbit hole, but just enough, you yeah. know. I, I contribute yearly to Wikipedia because I'm on it so much that oh, I'm my a, goodness. I'm a, I wow. do donate, I donate to them because I use that site <laughs> so much. <laughs> Because I just need to know these things. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. I just do. No, no, no. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's what I do in this, this world. If there's something I don't know, a guest asks me a question. I'm like, gosh, I don't know. I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm going to, I got to go yeah. figure this stuff out. Mm -hmm. And then my busy brain at night sits there until three o'clock in the morning, just researching that topic or jumping into another side topic about it. Where's it come from? The history. I was like, eh, yeah, this is. So I see where that goes. That too. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Definitely so everybody's that. got their, their little thing, but yeah. I love that you just, you're, you're just a natural talent at I, this. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Clearly, no, I, actually, I mean, if you guys see the setup right here, so excited. Well, we have to try to come prepared. We're making just one drink. So we're going <laughs> to at least do that one as best we can, uh, yeah. which is funny. So actually in all throughout high school, I was a, an art major. Oh, never, ever, ever, fun. ever had an inkling or a thought that I wanted to get into the hospitality industry or anything like that. I, I love to draw. I spent a, a whole half of my day in an art department, you know, black and white mediums. I was uh, color theory classes, mm -hmm. uh, Strata 3D Pro doing all this and just enthralled with it. And once I was getting ready to graduate high school, I kind of saw what people in that world made and I got a light bulb turned on. I was like, you know, what if, what if I turn my hobby into profession and I destroy my hobby? 
like drawing was like, I had a stressful day. I'm going to go home and just get lost in a project and okay. balance. And I was like, man, I'm not going to make very much money. I'm going to go to school, the art Institute out here in Vegas, $80,000 a year back in like 2005. And I'm going to make $29,000 a year out of the, out of the shoot. Mm-hmm. Do I really want to do this? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought about business admin. Mm-hmm. And that's when I started getting into restaurants. I started, um, working at a beer pizza place back in Casper, Wyoming called Old Chicago. Okay. And it's fun because all my friends were going to school and I was like, hey, I got to get into school. I got to do this, but I got to be able to afford it. And they're all working like four or five hours a day, making great money, like almost full-time income. It's like, I could do that. I could do that. Mm-hmm. So I waited for them to, you know, have a job posting come up, went in there and I tried to lie my way into uh, my first serving job. Called me out right uh-huh. on the spot and I was like, yeah, I zero restaurant experience. He goes, that's great because um, I'm not even hiring servers. I'm hiring dishwashers. Okay. I was like, okay. Is what you, you, you want to do it? I have to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I spent four days in dish pit and started doing prep cook, pizza days. cook, everything. Four days. <laughs> I have a very, very busy brain. I don't do well in cubicle jobs. That's why I love, no. um, I was diagnosed with ADHD as a kid and I was on a lot of Ritalin growing up. So I mean, mm-hmm. I eventually got off that, but it's like finding ways to um, concentrate all my focal points into one thing. But behind a bar, I can just let it go wild. I've got something new to do every three seconds. This is fantastic. Uh-huh. So four days behind dish pit, I've only cleaned so many dishes and I'm on top of the dishwasher scrubbing the wall and maintaining this and doing that. They're like, all right, no, 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 you're done. You're done. Over here, over here. Let's go to prep. Squirrel. Made my way around. Yeah. Pizza cook. Everything I didn't do in the kitchen was line cook. I got out to busing, serving, and then eventually got stuck behind the bar, helping out a bartender one day and got <laughs> manager coaxed me into that role. And, the rest and is here history. we are. Yeah. Like I said, it was a, a nice little happy accident ending up behind the stick. And yeah. so yeah, I've spent the last, uh, gosh, I've spent the last almost uh, 13 years up and down Las Vegas Boulevard now. Good. Yeah. Sort of I mean. Cosmopolitan. Then after there, I got a chance to open up the Cromwell. Uh, I was there for a couple of years. Okay. Uh, eventually went over to Tried the local gaming thing for a few months. Definitely wasn't my niche. And then uh, was I available to, what was it, uh, Libertine Social over Mandalay Bay. I was able to go um, get that thing going. So I worked under Tony Abaganum over there for a little while. Uh, they call him the, the modern mixologist out here. He's a vodka connoisseur. Uh, just a, one of the best human beings I've ever met. I want to say, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, uh, my friend Jake worked at Libertine Social, or maybe he still does. Jake Leslie? Oh, yes. I knew Jake. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he was our AGM, then he eventually went over to the Mirage. Okay. I don't know where he's at now since that project's I don't know. Up, but... He used to own a, a where Evil Pie is now. Yeah, that he used a to sandwich be... shop, right? I think so. Yeah. 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 Small world. I know. So I love I about know. the city. Everybody's like, oh, it's so huge. I'm like, yeah, it's a big city, but very, very small world. Every time you wind up going into a, another bar, another um, event, you will be very, very surprised to see how many people you recognize or know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Always. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I spent the last, uh, gosh, three years uh, over at uh, Resorts World. And how is that? It's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So I've never been inside uh, Brezzo before, but I will definitely come and visit. Oh, please do. Please do. Yes. Yeah. We've got Brezzo. We've got our sister restaurant next door, Barzazu. Okay. Got a hand in the, the beverage program over there. In between the restaurants, we're getting ready to open a, an, an oyster bar. We're going to break ground on that here in a few weeks. So we'll have three restaurant concepts under one roof here pretty soon. All right. Yeah. Okay. Got some good momentum, good things coming. Yeah. I. Uh, so I, I think Resorts World was more like around the pandemic, right? Yeah. Like, so they, or like right, right after? Right after the pandemic, yeah. yeah. So it was a very odd time to open a, a brand new resort, <laughs> let alone a new restaurant. Uh, I was working with Smith Walensky, the uh, steakhouse inside the Grand Canal shops before that, uh-huh. when the pandemic hit and okay. all the furloughing stuff. And that was a very, very weird time. I think that that really changed a lot of people. It broke a lot of people. I think it opened a lot of people's eyes. Like, okay, I'm done. This, this is it for me. I'm changing industries. A lot of people. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I can, I get that. I do. Um, yeah, I've definitely had a lot of pivots. Yeah. But. I've never been more happy in my professional life than I am right now. I think it's, I think it's good every once in a while, not to say that there's a lot of bad things that happened during the pandemic, but a lot of good things can come out of that as yeah. well. I think uh, for some people, it's the realization. It's like, all right, we're going through some tough times right now. How can I future-proof myself? How can I better myself in this downtime? I was doing some projects at home or my little one-bedroom apartment uh, in my downtime. That's kind of like 
push me more into consulting side or the creative side of this. And it's like I said, it's taken off. Now I've got my own side LLC for consulting that I do, uh, you know, when I'm done with my day job and yeah, it's been, it's been really good, but had I not had that, that crunch of time right there and then mm-hmm. opening a new property and I said, it was just such a strange time because we opened the property up and then a month later get the mask mandate comes back and it's the crazy restriction. So <laughs> yes. it was odd. I'm like, it's either make or break. I don't know. We'll see what uh-huh. happens. I've already kind of committed and jumped into this concept. So let's see where we can go. And That's here we are three years later and it's, it's been fantastic. I'm so glad. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I've been to Resorts World once. That was in July. Okay. <laughs> oh, this July. Yes. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. So you yeah, hit us on a slow and, time, and too. It was, it My was goodness. Our, our, our mutual ombre. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, he, uh, we were with a, a different brand uh, there uh, pitching to uh, Carver Steak. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's our, our nice little uh, neighbors next door. Yeah. 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 Hey, you definitely have to come in sometime. That'd yes, be great. I'm going to come and see you. I am. Check it out. Mm hmm. So, looking forward to it. Before we get too far. It smells oh. very minty. Yes, we got some fresh mint right here, but maybe we should get into the uh, the cocktail that we wanted to okay. um, have you try today. So uh, going off of recipe shared, we're trying to do a little bit of a rework uh, of what's called an a walk-in wake-up, which is a, a mezcal, or we call a quality mezcal uh, cocktail with some Mario's Hard Espresso, the original cocktail called for lime juice, a habanero tincture. In this case, we're using Scrappy's Firewater. And a tahini rim with some mint, uh, with some with a mint sprig on top. Okay. So, I didn't try the cocktail and, and, myself. And what's that? So this right here is uh-huh. part of the revision. Okay. Of the cocktail. Uh, having tried the cocktail myself, had a couple others try it verbatim on the recipe card. It starts up with a little bit of smoke, a little bit of the espresso, and then it has this very odd, kind of unpalatable bitterness to it. Yes. And then as that tapers away, I get that nice sensation of heat in the aftertaste. Nowhere before, and then just falls off. So I'm like, okay, it's not enough for me to even want to go back in for another sip. So mm-hmm. like, what's enticing me to this drink? It's not a lot. So looking at all the ingredients inside there, I see why maybe the, maybe the person who wrote the cocktail paired the cocktail with lime, mm-hmm. being an, an agave distillate or mezcal. Right. But everything else in the drink, I think actually lends better with lemon juice. Okay. So we've switched the citrus out. Okay. In this case, I'm using a cold press lemon juice. Dos Sombres Mezcal. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that stuff. Huge fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're using the Mario's Heart Espresso. Mario's Heart Espresso, I was trying this with, um, and vertical tasting it with other coffee liqueurs, Good. Kahlua and Mr. Black. Good. Mr. Black seems very, very popular. Uh-huh. People using their espresso martinis. My biggest complaint, my biggest personal gripe with espresso martinis these days, there's no espresso in them. They're using cold brew coffee or some sort of coffee concentrate. Right. That's fine. Then change the name. Don't uh-huh. call it an espresso martini unless I have a little bit of espresso in my uh-huh. martini, right? So having tried the Mario's Hard Espresso, what I loved about this is it is a bit sweeter, mm-hmm. but it's, it, it really dials in those espresso notes. It's got it some cane does. sugar inside there and a Madagascar vanilla extract, which really rounds things out. Yes. Uh, like I said, it's got actual espresso inside it as well. So if you shake it on its own, it develops that nice little crema, like a shot of espresso would after mm-hmm. brewing it. Yeah. Which is great. So... Uh, I've also used uh, Borghetti espresso liqueur. It's an Italian one. Mm-hmm. Similar uh, flavor profile. This one is a touch sweeter, but again, it concentrates some of those espresso notes a little bit better. And I think it makes it a little more approachable to the wider demographic. Okay. Other people are like, ah, it's too bitter for me. Got to mix it up. On this, I could, I could enjoy this on the rocks. For, it might be a little too sweet for my liking, but mm-hmm. mixability of this mm-hmm. is awesome. Right. There's a lot of things That's you can exactly do there. what I was hoping you were going to say yes, about it. Yes, 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 yes. There's so many ways you can take this. That's why I love the recipe card you shared because it has all different spirit categories. Vodkas, yes. rums, gins, tequilas, uh, mezcal. So it shows the diversity of, you know, what you can do with the Smarios Hard Espresso. And it's also Italian as well. Working in an Italian restaurant, it's fantastic. Uh, so we're using the Italian espresso liqueur. Then I've also, for today's cocktail, I've got a little Vecchio Amaro del Capo, which is a, an Italian Amaro from I Calabria. Amaro. I'm a huge fan of Amaro. So we're doing more Amaro now than we ever have in the, in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those who don't know what Amaro is, the term itself literally translates to bitter. And Italians like drink almost all the time. Not for the same reason some of us are trying to go drink on a Friday night, but it's a cultural thing. They're drinking 
before dinner. They're drinking the aperitivos to get themselves ready for the meal. They're drinking mm-hmm. wines that pair well with the, uh, the dishes during the meal. And then afterwards, they're enjoying these amaros, these bitters. And what they do is they're helping aid the digestive tract. Um, some of them are slightly sweetened. They're a wild combination of local herbs, roots. Uh, a lot of these have very, very old recipes that go back hundreds of years. Yep. So coveted that some families have actually gone to war over their recipe. Yeah. Family feuds. A little bit. But I like Amaro in a lot of cocktails because I feel like a lot of cocktails hit the, the sweet, the sour, the savory component, some salty. But what a lot of the cocktails I think sometimes lack is bitter. And a diverse portfolio of Amaros that are out there, there's a lot of fun play that we can, we can use this, these things for. So today we're incorporating a little bit of that with our Mario's Heart Espresso, Dos Ombres Mezcal, uh, Cold Pressed Lemon Juice. We're going to stick with the Scrappy's Fire Water. I like this habanero tincture the most because I feel like it imparts the most heat without imparting too much of the flavor of the pepper itself. So this is a universal tool. I can add this to a Bloody Mary. I can add to a spicy margarita, anything. Two to three dashes. I get that nice little heat sensation. Heat's supposed to be a sensation that's felt afterwards. Mm-hmm. Nothing that's overbearing and it's going to wreck your palate, but a couple drops of this, we're, we're good to go. Yeah, uh, you did uh, recommend that, so I bought myself a bottle. I haven't opened it yet. Oh, you haven't? Oh, no. yeah. Play with it. Put in anything spicy you want. Okay. Yeah. Just be mindful, though, the amount of citrus you pair with it. So if you put more citrus in a cocktail with habanero tincture, mm-hmm. the citrus will actually amplify the spice. Okay. Just be careful with that. We did that uh, a long time ago. Uh, we worked for Salvatore Calabresi. We batched his spicy 50, and we let it sit with citrus overnight. And we tried the day of, and like, this is fantastic. We're ready for the event tomorrow. Straw taste it the next day, and we're like, what the hell happened? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's what it was, sitting there yeah. with the citrus, and it just... It dialed everything up to 11. But let's go ahead and uh, let's get this cocktail started, huh? Okay. Go ahead and ice our glass down. All right. So new recipe. We're, instead of doing two ounces of, I'm sorry, ounce and a half of mezcal, we're turning up the mezcal a little bit to an ounce and three quarter. Okay. I'm going to prepare two of these so we can each have one. And I also want to tell you that uh, after your little, uh, demonstration at activation house last week oh yeah i picked myself up a jig or two. Oh, it's a fantastic tool and i encourage most if you can use a jigger use a jigger i think i i got one just like the one that you were using oh yes today. the little uh the two one yeah the two one. japanese style jigger uh-huh. yeah, yeah that stuff's great the recipe called for an ounce and a half of mario's hard espresso so they were doing equal parts mezcal to um mario's okay. espresso I want to back down the sugar a little bit, and we're using a great quality mezcal. I want that to be a little more of the star of the show. And once all these flavors get combined, I think you'll see why. Okay. So an ounce and a quarter of Mario's Hard Espresso. God, the aroma on this, too. Roast and Madagascar vanilla. Yeah, I was very, very surprised by that. Okay. All right. So. Well, we love, love, love hearing that. Mm -hmm. So the owner of Mario's was uh, the last guest on the pod. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. That's fantastic. Wow. So they just have the one liqueur that's under it. there? Because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's his dad's brand, right? Yeah. Okay. I love hearing that. Those family stories. Yeah, that's his dad. On That's Mario. So I said, yeah, I saw that. The, he's got his picture there on the back as well. So that, uh, I asked if he was a prize fighter and he was a farmer. So that uh, physique is called farm ripped. Farm ripped. Yes. I've never heard that. I hadn't either. <laughs> until so the what? interview pinch of sea salt in the drink as well okay so sea salt in a lot of um cocktails now lends very well because salt is nature's natural flavor amplifier Mm -hmm. salt does a lot of good with cocktails especially like this we've got some of these espresso notes um it'll kind of balance out some of the sugar inside there as well the original cocktail called for lime juice but again i think i've got madagascar vanilla in here espresso um vecchio mardo capo its flavor profile lends better to lemon than lime half ounce Half ounce of pressed cold pressed lemon cold juice. Pressed lemon juice. Yeah. This is nice because it doesn't go through the same like sun kissed juicer. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't see all that oxygen and start to deteriorate. Mm-hmm. You know how long it takes for juice to start to oxidize? About twenty minutes. After I was it's gonna pressed. say, like so less, fast. less than an hour, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so fast. So this doesn't see any preservatives. It's cold press in the bottle. It's good for about six months. Once I open the bottle, I've got about ten days. Oh. And it tastes as good as fresh squeeze. I think it's even better. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the, uh, the Vecchio Mardo Capo, we're doing a quarter ounce. 
Again, just a little bit of a flavor bump. This is going to help uh, push some of those flavors forward. It's got a lot of baking spice in it. So cinnamon, just a touch of sugar. Adds a little savory component as well. Yeah, Very that, inexpensive. That is one That's amaro one. I have not tried. There are I've so many amaros out there. I've tried my fair share. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Come by Brazil. We've got about 30, 35. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are we going to have an amaro party if I come? Probably. <laughs> All right. Dos Sombres party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. It's the sound of happiness, everyone. Oh, yeah. I got a nice little froth on it. That looks great. There it's, we are. It looks slushy and Again, frosty and delicious. That's right. So you want that nice little crema on the top there, that shaking the cocktail vigorously for mm-hmm. a little while. Uh-huh. Adds micro air bubbles on the inside and opens up a lot of those flavors. This particular um, dilution is going to be about 15 to 18%. Try to smack the mint on the side of the glass. Some bartenders like to clap it in their hands, but I don't know when the last time most bartenders washed their hands between each transaction, right? All right. So this is a little bit cleaner, but mint being the most delicate herb, a nice little smack on the side of the glass, really opens up those aromatics, softens it up, adds a little perceived sweetness on the nose kind of, I think, in contrast, gives a good balance to the savory cocktail, smoky okay. cocktail on the inside. Cheers, Cheers, friend. You know what we forgot? What? Scrappy's fire water. <laughs> yep. Look at that. You get too busy talking. Two drops. Two drops. Ooh, okay. Okay. All right. Cheers. So now you can see the night and day. Okay. Now we're trying it all over again. Yes. So this is a nice little happy accident. So you tried it before mm-hmm. the Scrappy's fire water. Right. Now try it with... The scrappy fire. That's just two drops. Okay. Oh wow! That nice little tickle that in the back. That is amazing. That's a nice little aftertaste. Richest. You have you have smoky and creamy and spicy. Just a little bit of spice, not too mm-hmm. much. You have that citrus in there. Get your espresso notes going. You can taste that vanilla. Yeah, all that wow. vanilla is coming from that, and it's just reworking this recipe a little bit. This Vecchio Capo kind of piggybacks off that Madagascar vanilla. Rounds it out, but it's nice because it's not overly smoky. I think a lot of people don't like mezcal these days because they haven't had a good mezcal cocktail. I d- I agree, yes. Mm. And but some people, but I feel like mezcal is like trending. Also. Oh yes, yes, yes. 100%. Agave spirit as a category, mm-hmm. I think it's overtaking vodka here soon. Like it's it it's is. wild, mm-hmm. which it's, is good. As it's it should. tequila, mezcal, and uh, espresso martinis are the top three. Mm. Right I think now. it's up there with the uh, the Aperol Spritz now. I think the Aperol, actually, I think the Espresso Martini has overtaken the Aperol, the Aperol Spritz. Spritz. Yes. Yeah. Okay, this is amazing. You like this one? Okay. I had to try. I'm going to have to give the recipe to Joe Grasso. Yeah, from please Mario's. do. Yeah, happy to share. And um, hopefully when we do the reprint on the brochure, we'll get you a little. That'd be great. Yeah. A little blurb on that. there. That would be good. Yeah. That'll, that'll be my suggestion. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. That was good. Of course. Yeah. It's always a little. Uh, little nod, never expected, but always appreciated. So this is something I can continually go back and wow. sip because I get that sensation all over again. I get the that nice, nice light smoky mezcal, the espresso liqueur, and then that little tickle in the aftertaste. That is amazing. Yeah. It was a nice little rework. The original recipe wasn't, I want to say it's a bad recipe. I don't ever like to down talk another barman's right. talent or their work, mm-hmm. but there's things that can be reworked and reconfigured to make them better for the consumer. Because that's yes. why we... If there weren't people coming to our bars, we wouldn't be in bars. That's why, because I saw that recipe. I think, um, let's see, where was I? I was at Grape Street. Mm. Down, or is that yeah, downtown Summerlin? That right? is in downtown Summerlin. Okay. And so I went, I was there with a sales rep from the distributor that distributes Mario's. Okay. And then we decided that we wanted to try the Oaxacan wake up recipe that was in the little brochures that I had with me that day. Right. And it wasn't, I mean, they, they, they followed it verbatim and it just mm. wasn't there. It was just That's something was lost. Right. And I was like, okay, I know that this can be better. I know that they were just little tweaks, like so something close. just so little. Close. Yeah. yeah. And I hit you up and here we are. Bam. It's funny. Cause <laughs> I actually went through half a bottle of Mars espresso yesterday, working on this cocktail, trying it. I always try when I'm building cocktails, building them in micro doses. 
Mm-hmm. So I think a full size, I can burn through a bottle in no time, you know? Yeah. So we're doing like little micro tastes of each one. I've got the little tasting cups and going back and forth. And it, it just took a little more work to get these things. But it, I don't want to overcomplicate the cocktail as well, because right. especially when people see this long list of ingredients and there's some, a bunch of unnamed or things that they don't really understand, they get a little shunned away from it. They just, I don't know, they get a little defensive. I like to present things that are most of what people understand with a little bit of mystery. Yes. The Shill and Ty's like, you know what? I know nine out of 10 things there. That's great. I'll give it a go. Wow, that's fantastic. Because I remember working at Vesper at the Cosmopolitan. So okay. I later went inside and, and was on call all over, which was my biggest, biggest growth. Uh, I got put at a, a bar that has 24 classic cocktails. Or, uh, they were 12 classic cocktails done right. And then their riff on those 12 cocktails. So very, very, very involved menu with some of the best mixologists, bartenders out here in the country. And I remember one of those nights, I was actually, I slid the menu to this guy. I finally memorized the recipe for all the recipes for this entire menu, had it all down. I'm like, we're waiting for this guy just to hit me with something. Like, all right, man, I got it. Slide the menu. He takes 10 minutes to look through everything. Closes the book, slides it back. I'll have a Jack and Coke. And I was like, what's that? What? He goes, no, no, no. And I was like, I don't know what any of this is. I'm sorry. And I was like, no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But hey, drink what you like. It's yes. fine. But it's funny because on that same day, uh, we had a great conversation. Gentleman closed out. Next day, I'm at the same bar. He comes back. We're shooting the shit again. And it turns out he's not even staying at Cosmopolitan. He's staying at another property at another convention at another property. So I was like, this bar is way out of your way, man. Like what? You, you passed eight bars that I can think of <laughs> on your way over here. What makes you want to come back here? He's like, no, no, we just had a great conversation last night. I thought it was kind of fun. I want to do it again. I was like, dang. So it wasn't the beverage menu that he came back for. He came back for the human interaction. Oh. Yeah. Aww. But that's what your local gaming bartenders are like. Yeah. I mean, you go there. I'm not going to order a Vucare or a Sazerac or God forbid a Ramos Gin Fizz. That's a beer in a shop bar. But you're going to go there because your boy's working or, you know, Tracy's working, you know. Yeah. You go back for there for that kind of personality. That's why that there's, there's different, well, I love that there's different types of bartenders out there and they all do very, very, very good things behind the stick. I can't say enough good things about this revision that you did. Good. I mean, I'm glad you like this. Holy, I can't, I have a call with him tomorrow, so I can't wait to <laughs> tell him all about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it can do uh, the base spirit, a, uh, and we can try that, that first rendition that we, you know, we're presented with. We try that and we're like, ah, especially if they've never had Mezcal before and that's their first interaction with it. Kind of doing a disservice to, to what it can be. Well, so let me just say that um, I had Dos Hombres with me in my bag because it's always in my bag. Right. And um, they did not, they do not carry a Mezcal at that bar. Interesting. Did they say why? Nope. And I was with the Mario's Hard Espresso distributor rep. Uh So I wasn't trying to step on any toes, right? Ah, smart, smart. But like he didn't have a mezcal with him that day. We wanted to try the recipe. Mm -hmm. I had one. Look at you, building bridges. we tried it. (laughs) That's awesome. This stuff is fantastic as far as mezcal. uh, It's a good introductory mezcal. I remember the last time that we had those guys in our restaurant a couple years ago. Okay. Got a chance to actually speak with Aaron and very, very humble guy. Great. We got talking about and nerding out about like a uh, barrel aged cocktails. He does a barrel aged mezcal Negroni at home. Oh, I was like, Ooh, I need to try that. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to get down on that a little bit. We talk about how like the brand itself can be more of an approachable mezcal where it starts off as like light smoky mezcal, but can finish like a reposado tequila. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, when, when you paint the image like that of yes. what this base is, I think a lot more people are enticed to go try it. Cause some people think mezcal, I don't like, I don't like Isla Scotch. I'm not going to enjoy this. This is like a campfire on a glass. Uh-huh. Some can be that way. This one? Some can be very soft, very light, but still bold enough uh-huh. that I can put this in a cocktail. Yeah. I got this in a cocktail at Brezza actually right now. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. It's a little cocktail called the Viajera. Okay. It's a sour watermelon smoky mezcal cocktail. A little super sour watermelon syrup, lime juice, Campari. A little bitter component. Okay. And a healthy portion, two ounces of Dos Ombres Mezcal. Okay. Well, I can't wait to go and try it. Yeah. I can't wait for you to come in and try it. It's actually, uh, this is one of the cocktails we're using for the Picnic in the Alley. Picnic in the Alley. So we're donating $2 of every Viajera, as well as one of our other cocktails mm-hmm. sold to, um, I think we're donating that to the cause. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. 
Are you going to be there at the event? I will not. You'll not be there. So we're going to have uh, our executive chef is actually out of state at that time. So we're doing a little pop-up there where uh, Brezza, our Italian restaurant, is going to be serving out um, little cookies and in little goodie bags. Mm-hmm. And then our sister restaurant, Barzazu, mm-hmm. uh, more of a tapas restaurant, they're going to have uh, meat skewers and stuff that they can okay. present. Kind of give people a little taste test of uh, both brands. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Gosh, ah, I don't know where to go because I can just uh, start could, rattling off could, all day. I mean, you and yeah. I could probably stand here and nerd out all day. Mm-hmm. And Which, and I think that we're going to nerd out a lot more in the future. I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is going to be great. What's your go-to drink? Um, well, this has been, this has definitely been a, a tequila mezcal summer for me. Okay. Like uh, that's been like, um, they have, there's a, a jalapeno cilantro margarita at Bonito Michoacan. Okay. Up the street that is knocking my socks off right now. Wow. Um, it's just so fresh and it just, it's cause this has been such a hot summer. Oh, flavors like that. They yeah. cut the heat there uh-huh. again. They do. And then you can have two um, of those in a heartbeat. My best friend, she, uh, represents the hoteling and company portfolio. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. It's, it's at Southern. Like that whole thing is mm-hmm. she has a brand in there called Fiero Tequila. Have you tried it? I have not. Have you heard of it? Um, it's, they, it, it's, um, there's a there's a habanero tequila and there's a serrano tequila. Oh, and um, they're different. They're both different animals, right? Right. And I can't say enough great things about it. Like she turned me on to this, or uh, like early in the year, mm-hmm. and is we've just been. It's a staple. Like we do bloody Maria's on Sunday morning. Oh, beautiful! With it, and Those are great. Just, it's so great. Yeah. So when I do go. To Brezza, mm-hmm. I'll bring her, and she'll bring some Fiero. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, and you can try that. Definitely just have a time. So tequila now, what was your drink before the agave? Um, So uh, margaritas. Oh, always. okay, okay, wow. So this was gotta... this is from my mom. This is faded, but oh, I love so, that. yeah, so when she passed away, me and my daughter both got, because she, she loved her Margs. Yeah, that's my grandmother. And Absolutely her name was, loved it. was Marty, so oh. we always do, like, whenever she and I are out together or whatever, it's always... Hashtags Margs for Marty. <laughs> it's always been margaritas mostly, but um, but being in the business, I just I don't want like a plain, you know. I don't want frozen. Oh, I gosh, want something no, no. crafted. I don't really do salt on the rim. You know, maybe a little in it. Yeah, yeah, so a little in it can rim. turn some flavors up. I don't need the salt but, so much. Yeah, so I just so you know, being in the business as long as I've been in the business, I'm I'm particular about what goes into it. But yeah, I just it should be. You get a little more educated and you yeah. kind of yeah, you can discern like all right, this can be a good craft cut margarita or basic margaritas. No, no, I'm good. But there's something about that jalapeno really? cilantro margarita. <laughs> Cilantro's great. Yeah. Oh, you don't have that weird aversion where uh, it what is it? Cilantro starts to taste like dish soap. My younger I, brother I has that. I was like, you poor I don't man, have that. You poor bastard. No, I would be so <laughs> upset if I did because uh, yeah, I love same. cilantro. Same. It's a, cilantro it's and a everything. great little herb. And a lot of people ask me that like when it comes to the bar, like, hey, what do you drink when you're, when you go out? And I was like, I'm kind of a liquor slut. I, I will drink it all, uh-huh. but I almost never like to drink the same thing twice. Right. You go out for an experience, you know? Yeah. Like, all right, I'm going to have a, I'll have a Boulevardier right now. I want some bourbon. I want some bitter notes. Yeah, I'll go for that. Next one, I'll go for a whiskey highball. Whiskey, soda water, bounce around. It's a create your own adventure. It's so good. Let's find out about this drink now. After it's even had some some time to sit with ice, mm-hmm. you filter around a little bit. I still get all those flavors. It opens up a little bit more. So good. Yeah. This is my first experience with your fire water, and I'm not disappointed. No, no. I've got, I think, five or six different habanero or fire water or spice tinctures at home. Mm-hmm. And I like what they each do, but I feel like they're very, I don't know. I've, I've only got so many avenues I could use it in right. for so many cocktails because a lot of people don't understand flavor affinity and what flavors pair well with others, which ones are just absolute do not touch. Right. But the heat part, that's what we want to impart. So I think this does, I think it does the job for what we're looking for right here. It does. Mm-hmm. 100%. It's not bad. It's like $22 for a bottle, but you're using yeah. a couple drops. Like this bottle, I bought this bottle four years ago. Yeah. And I'm it's doing a lot of R&D, a lot of projects. While. Exactly, exactly. So money well spent. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I'm so happy that you came by today. Yeah, thanks for having yeah, me. That was great. This was fun. This was fun. I should get a little uh, yeah. nice light libation before work. Yeah. Cheers again. Do you have to work today? I do now. I just picked up a shift this evening. Oh. <laughs> okay. At our sister restaurant next door. We're okay. back in busy season. Mm -hmm. um, their slow summer has finally come to an end, and we're off to the races. Well, I'm sure that um, all of my clients are going to be happy to hear that things are picking up. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. Because these last two months' numbers are horrible. have been brutal. Yeah. I think what some people, and here's my personal opinion. I feel like this is a summer pre-COVID. Summers in Vegas have always been notoriously slow. Mm -hmm. High temperatures, it's hot, the pools are going off, everybody's out there doing that, the conventions aren't really happening. Right. But after COVID, people list, they missed a lot of their conventions, yeah. so they're rescheduling them in the summertime. Yeah. So for the last three years, honestly, I felt like we were spoiled. Right. I was like, why is it July and I can't get a day off? Like, I'm six days straight, we're making money, this is great. But I feel like now, personally, I'm like, this is what a, a normal Vegas summer pre-COVID has been like. And we've had record-breaking temperatures as that well. That too. That yeah. too. People don't want to eat that much. People don't want to drink no. that much, especially going out into the heat. Yeah, mm -hmm. It just, yeah, it's everywhere. It's, it's coming to an end. Oh, hopefully, hopefully my uh, other clients are listening. Yeah. And now we can definitely, we have an accurate uh, description of, of why numbers were down so severely in July and August. It's funny when I bring that topic up and that point, I think a lot of people are like, ah, hey, you know what? That's not a bad point. Because we, what we do, we, we compare <laughs> yes. numbers this year from last year. That's yeah. what we, we constantly that's like to track. Whatever, but I think yeah, if we were to track we're back mm -hmm. 2019 summer and see where numbers are comparing, get, given those other things that have happened in those those years. But this is kind of, I think we're, we're finally starting to level out a little, little bit. Yes, I hope but so. fall's coming. We've got tons of business in town. Numbers are going to go through the roof. It's going to be good. But yeah, this was fun. Yeah, this was mm -hmm. so fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Always. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't wait to tell them about it tomorrow. Good. And then we'll get your name on the, on the brochure. I appreciate that. That's great. Yeah. I think that's a nice touch, you know, just give people credit. It is. You know? Yeah. That's funny. I had my mom ask me one time, the first time actually at Neapolitan, I had a, a cocktail that I developed mm -hmm. and tasted Marina on it. She loved it. She put it on the menu. And my mom's like, oh, that's awesome. Like, how much do you make off that? And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, like when the drink sells, like, what do you make? I was like, well, if they tip. 15, 20 percent, then I make that, you know, the tip yeah. off it. She's like, no, she's like, no, 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 like you don't get paid every time that drink sells. I was like, wow, <laughs> that doesn't work like royalties. Royalties. Yeah. I was like, every time I get a radio play, I get a, uh, a couple yeah. cents in the mail. No, I don't think it works like that. I wish it did. Yeah, that would be really nice. It's but... actually something I think I might try to uh, negotiate. I've got a, a contract negotiation coming up in January for a project out in California. Mm -hmm. And somebody pitched the idea. I was like, hey, what if you what if you went in half on your consulting cost because they're budget conscious? Mm -hmm. But what if you ask for like a small percentage of those cocktails sold? And I was hmm. like, that might not be bad. Yeah. So, I mean, I've got means I've got a lot more skin in the game. I yeah. better make a quality product that's actually going to move. Right. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of hurting. But that's what a lot of guys do. They pay it up front and then they're off to the races and, you know, let them profit off of it. That's, that's, that's an idea. That's not a bad idea. So that's I just got to figure out how to structure all. that, negotiate, but yeah. Okay. Well, the next time he's in town, I'm going to bring Joe Grasso with me. Please. And, um, he gets to try this for himself. Love it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So Joe, there's your invitation. Come on by. Yep. Well, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. Thanks for having me again. I really, really appreciate that. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. I'm Tracy Bradley, and that's the Thirst Trap Podcast. Produced and edited by Gonzo Greg Spillane for Noise Department. Please like and subscribe wherever you enjoy your podcasts and share with your friends and associates in the beverage industry or anybody who drinks things. You can always visit and contact me at thirsttrappodcast.com and you can find links to all the socials there as well. Till next time, cheers. Cheers.